So let's talk about something that's just happened in the Linux community as a whole. Uh, Manjaro Linux has basically come under siege because they started offering what was called Free Office. It was a proprietary piece of software that emulates the Microsoft Office suite. Almost looks identical to it, down to the icons. I mean, it almost is a one-to-one -one copy. However, it was going to be bundled with Manjaro Linux instead of the Libre Office. And I actually talked on the DistroTube Patreon chat because I'm a Patreon of his because I like a lot of his educational content that he puts out about tiling managers, terminal, a very knowledgeable channel. If you hadn't checked him out, definitely do it. I'll leave a link in the below. But here is basically what was said. I'm just going to go ahead and take a little snippet from that Patreon chat with DistroTube of me and him kind of going back and forth. One of the big things that's kind of blowing up right now hey. is uh, the news that Manjaro, I guess, has a sponsorship with a proprietary software project called the Free Office Suite, and they're going to start shipping that proprietary software on their flagship edition ISOs. Mm -hmm. And w w instead of LibreOffice, instead of, you know, free and open source <laughs> LibreOffice, what do we think about that shipping proprietary software on their images. The thing over the years with Linux is we never put proprietary software on these images unless absolutely necessary, unless there was no free alternative. LibreOffice is a fantastic free alternative, but I think it hurts them in the end, though. I, don't, I, I, I can't imagine this is going to be positive for them. I'm going to uh, actually link to the discussion that's going on on the Manjaro forums right now. <laughs> I don't know. I, I expect... After a few days, Manjaro may adjust this position and still ship LibreOffice, maybe offer a installer of free Office, maybe on the ISO. It looks like a, just a Microsoft ripoff. They took the names and almost like their icon set and yes. their ribbons. Mm -hmm. I don't I mean, know. I, I can kind of see it. I'm not, a, I'm, everyone knows that I'm not a huge fan of LibreOffice just because it's so foreign to me because I've been a Microsoft Office user for. I don't know, 25 years. So yeah. that's why it's just what, what I know. And uh, I need to just break myself of it and learn the the FOSS component or alternative like I did with GIMP when I finally got off Photoshop and moved to GIMP. But Office is one of the things that just is constantly uh, a problem with me where I'm, I, I've, I've literally just gone to the point where I'm using Microsoft Office online in, in Linux. And, and that's messed up. I, I hate using browser-based offices and uh, you know that but i mean that's just me coming from that right stuck in a rut and, and i need to get over it but i just haven't yet i don't know why yeah and they have learning curves like LibreOffice and gimp that you mentioned they have big learning curves like mm -hmm. when i first moved to linux and started playing with gimp man it 12 years in i'm just now getting kind of comfortable with gimp i mean it's yeah. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I, yeah. I totally understand the, the stance of that. I think it's really giving the user the option during the installer, I think would be the best right. alternative. If you say, hey, this is what I think most Windows users coming to Linux would like, that's fine, but you need to make sure you don't alienate your current user base, which let's be let's face it, it's mostly Linux users, and just saying, hey, here's a whole bunch of proprietary crap where those that have been on Linux for a year, hell, I'm, I'm definitely in that camp now where I'm like, okay, is there a, a FOSS alternative to this program? I don't want to go to proprietary right out of the gate because I've seen how good uh, having open source programs are now and it's something I, I want to encourage. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I, I think they definitely need to give an option, not just, mm -hmm. here you go, it's pre-installed, it's what you should use kind of mentality. So as you see, this is kind of what happened in the Patreon chat, but DistroTube afterwards released his own video about it, and it was kind of amazing. You know, he, he came out very, very strongly against this because he is more of a Linux vet where I'm more of a newbie when it comes to the Linux world. I haven't even been in Linux desktop side of things for more than a year, and I was like, eh, you know, it doesn't really bother me. I've always liked Linux, uh, Manjaro Linux as a distribution but I also kind of want to shed some light on a couple things. One, uh, Manjaro Linux came out with this statement following all the backlash. And, uh, you know, like I said, DistroTube's probably one of the bigger Linux YouTubers out there. And he came out and did that. And a lot of people followed suit on Twitter and other things. And they heard everyone. And 
uh, Philip Mueller actually came out and said, hey, we're giving you the power of choice. This is the modular we're building. So if you do like LibreOffice, instead of doing FreeOffice, you can select LibreOffice in the distribution when you're, you're loading it up. So that is incredible. And honestly, that's kind of what I said would happen in the Patreon chat. That's why I was like, hey, it wouldn't bother me if uh, they just offered a choice. And they basically just said, hey, okay. And going ahead and make the module and do that. And why I love the Manjaro team, why I think it is one of the best, if not the best, Arch-based distributions out there is one, it's extremely user-friendly and noob-friendly. So I've made some critical pieces about Manjaro too, about, you know, I think I have one video that's like the Manjaro disaster when I was purposely doing updates through Pomac or the, the graphic user interface for updating packages and Manjaro, but I was using a custom spin of Manjaro and I ended up breaking that uh, Manjaro distribution. Now, having said that, I went through and I only had probably a thousand subs when I actually communicated with Philip Mueller via email. I had an actual email exchange with him back in the beginning of January. My channel just passed a thousand subscri subscribers back then. So I was pretty tiny in the relative world of things, but he saw what I was doing and somehow he heard about me, even though it was so small. And he sent me no less than probably 20 emails back and forth explaining certain things, how to properly update, how they actually do a lot of their updates, what the future looks like, hardware plans, all kinds of really cool stuff that they have going on as a team. And the fact he was so open and so uh, forthcoming with all of the different things they were doing as a company, uh, he immediately won me over. Even though I had issues with the distribution back then, they were mostly self-inflicted, and I kind of did it on purpose, and, and, and I did that just to because I was trying to emulate what a new user would do, and that's why I, you know, I almost purposely broke that distribution back then. Now, it almost makes me want to go ahead and spin a Manjaro uh, spin. And honestly, I've always loved them. And I've actually made a book on Amazon strictly over Manjaro, uh, specifically the Manjaro Architect Addiction. It, if you're interested in that, uh, you can check it out on Amazon. It's only a 99 cent ebook guide for the installation. Uh, so I mean, out of that, I think I see like 30 cents per copy sold. So don't feel obligated to go buy it or anything. It's not anything I really see any money from. It's just something I did because I thought it would be kind of fun if you're installing Manjaro Architect Edition, which is a little more advanced. Uh, I wanted like a full on guide someone could follow. So if you had like your Kindle, you could go ahead and download that book and then just kind of flip through it while you're installing Manjaro Architect Edition on your computer. So that's the whole reason I made that guide, just because I think thought it would be real beneficial for a lot of the Manjaro enthusiasts out there. But what I, my point here is, is Philip Mueller, which I think is like the lead developer for the whole Manjaro team, was extremely involved and still remains extremely involved in the community. He listens to people. He even goes out of his way to reach out people, which honestly don't really have much influence because, like I said, back then, I literally was 1 50th of the size of the channel I am now. So the fact he took the time to bother with basically a nobody back then, it's, it's kind of amazing that someone would do that. And that just shows how much he cares. This is obviously not just a job for him, but a passion. And how much he cares about the community means I think this is going to be one of the best distributions today, but definitely in the future, just because of how much uh, love goes into this project. So even though DistroTube was a little hard on him, at the same token, I'm kind of glad DistroTube made that video, just because it kind of reinforced that and, and kind of lets that team know, hey, uh, a lot of the Linux community doesn't like that. And sometimes when I get negative feedback on this YouTube channel, sometimes I don't do stuff that the Linux community likes. I get that. But the nice thing about it is I can listen to the comments and I go, okay, I see what everybody is upset about. I'll go ahead and address that issue. It's when someone uh, doesn't listen to feedback, doesn't listen to the community that you really need to worry. And that's really what uh, I needed to just want to come out and say with this. I think Manjaro is an excellent distribution today, but I think it's going to be a better distribution tomorrow. I really like them. I really like what they're doing. I think 
They're just a fantastic uh, distribution. If you're thinking of an Arch-based distribution and you're a bit of a noob on Linux, I would say Manjaro is where you start. And that's specifically because they have excellent forums. They are very, very uh, cognizant and, and listen to their community. And it's just shown by this example, not only by this example, but back in January, actually commuting directly with someone with such a small YouTube channel back then uh, it just shows how much they care. So I just want to make this video just to say thank you, Manjaro team. Thank you, Philip. Thank you all of what you do for the community because it's just fantastic. And to have the option of choice, having free office and also a Libre office is awesome. And honestly, when it comes to the proprietary aspect of it, I never advocate for proprietary software on Linux. But at the same token, I see what FreeOffice is trying to do here and the fact that they're almost a one-to-one -one copy of Microsoft Office. There's a place for that, I think. And, and I'm not going to completely uh, come out and just say, hey, that's a horrible project because honestly, I haven't used it. And until I use it, I, I'm not going to actually pass judgment. And uh, as far as LibreOffice, hey, that's a huge boon for the Linux community. But as a longtime Microsoft Office user, Coming over to Linux, uh, LibreOffice was just so foreign to me that I haven't really grown accustomed to using it that much. I still use it every once in a while, just not all the time. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.